Hello everyone, this is Alex and today we are doing some orchestration. And more precisely, today we are looking at how to do an orchestral crescendo. And so in this video, I will show you how to do this, starting from a simple piano reduction and making this a big crescendo throughout the whole orchestra. So doing an orchestral crescendo means going from soft to loud with the whole orchestra. Now this might sound simple because you would just say, well, Alex, just have everybody plays the music from the beginning to the end, from soft to loud. Then you got your orchestral crescendo. Well, no, it's not quite as simple as this because if you do this, well, it's gonna sound really bad. Well, actually it's not gonna sound horrible, but it's just gonna sound like bad orchestral writing. Now, what I really mean by orchestral crescendo is taking every tools you got in the orchestras, all the different instruments, all the different ensemble of instruments, and have them contribute to this crescendo by coming in one after the other in the music. Now to do this, I usually do this in five steps. Starting with the strings, I always think of the strings at first because they're the core of the orchestra. They're usually the ones that will play the most in your music or whatever music you're orchestrating. So having them at the beginning of this orchestral crescendo makes sense to me and bring a certain cohesion as well to the music because the strings are really the homophonic section of the orchestra. So they can really take the crescendo from the beginning to the end uh, in a really cohesive way. And the strings I forgot to mention, I usually don't use the double basses for the beginning of a crescendo. It might depend on the music, but generally the double bass I will keep it for a little bit later to suddenly double the cellos an octave below. This will make sure that the music is a little bit more defined at the beginning and then when you add in the double bass later it will make it really much bigger and contribute to this crescendo. Now the second group I usually add are some of the woodwinds, not all woodwinds, only the flute and the clarinet. I would say they are the most flexible of the woodwinds. They have this ability to really blend in the orchestra. The clarinet sound is round and mellow and the flute sound is airy and bright. And the clarinet can really pair well with the middle range strings and the flute, of course, with the melody itself. The third group I add in are the rest of the woodwinds, the oboe and the bassoons. Both of these are reed instruments and they're pretty noticeable when you add them, but they're still woodwinds, so they're not as loud as the brasses. So we keep the brasses for a little bit later and we add in the reed instruments on the third step. Now the fourth instrument in line are some of the brasses, the horns. The horns in terms of volume are really in between the woodwinds and the rest of the hard brasses. If you use them in their lower register, they will just bring some warmth and some ampleness to uh, the strings, really. And this is usually around the time I add in the double basses as well, to make the sound really much bigger and grow a lot. And finally, the fifth instruments I add are the trumpets, the trombones, and the tubas. Those are the hard brasses, and they should really be the last one you add to your crescendo, because they're the loudest instruments of the whole orchestra. We could think of also percussions, Although they might be added a little bit earlier, but it always depends uh, what kinds of percussions you're using. So this is my general guideline and I'll show you an example where I follow exactly this and I'll prove you this is very effective. But note that this guideline, you can make some slight changes to it. You might interchange some instruments to have them a little bit before or a little bit after, depending on the colors you want to hear first or later. But if you really want to be careful and make the this crescendo sound a little bit more organic, then what I present here is really the right order, I believe. So let's try and do an orchestral crescendo. So I'm going to be starting from this piece of music. Um, it's a little arrangement of a melody, which is actually from Arnold Schoenberg in La Nuit Transfigurée, Verklärte Nacht, if I'm pronouncing this correctly. Schoenberg was at the beginning a really advanced tonal composer. He was a real master in the right, and he wrote some amazing melodies in this period. So let's hear it first.
All right, so we're gonna start with the strings. We're gonna start with the violins. Um, let's do the melody first. Also, I made a small reduction so we know a little bit more where we're going. So uh, I'd say the first violin, I will give the, uh, the line above. Uh, it's gonna be exactly as written here. So really this melody is gonna start soft and go bigger and bigger. I'd say the climax will be measure six here. Um, really everybody will be there here. Um, and I might make a little diminuendo at the end. Now before I do the second violin, I do uh, the cello first, which is gonna do the bass line from the beginning to the end. Now for this middle part here in, within the strings, I'm gonna use the violas. Now I think I will only bring in the um, second violins on this note here because I really don't need them before. And if we want to make this kind of orchestral crescendo, we might as well make it within the string as well. Great, so before we add in um, the double basses, I will start with the flutes and the clarinets, which are the second one in line. So if one, everybody on measure six uh, playing, uh, so that's step five, we want step four here, or maybe here, uh, these are the horns. So we want our oboe and bassoon coming in on this bar here, the third bar. So this means that our clarinet and flutes are gonna come in a little bit earlier here. I think I want my clarinet to play the whole melody. It's really a great register for the clarinet. So I think I'm gonna have it play it from the beginning to the end. That sound really pretty. Now for the flute, uh, this is too low for register for the flute to play. 
And it's going to be hard as well for me to add in my elbows in there um, without it being too noticeable. So a great way to do an orchestral crescendo is to add some octaves above and some octaves below to make the music sound bigger suddenly and to contribute to the crescendo. So I will double the melody an octave higher on the flute. Now where would be a good place to do this? I think having the clarinet playing from the beginning is really is really great and helps the melody to stand out. But really the, the big first um, expressive leap that we have is here. Um, ta -ti -ta -ta -ti. So the F sharp and the A, this is where the flute's gonna start an octave higher. And until the end, I believe. Perfect, so we got ourselves a nice second step done. Now for the third step, I believe the oboe should come in next and maybe at the same time as the flute here. Now, since we've doubled this melody up an octave uh, for the flute, I think this uh, alto line here should go an octave higher as well on the oboe. And this is gonna be again until the end. So let's do this. Now the next bar is where I really feel a lot of warmth. This chromatic from like G major to G minor here is so pretty and this is where I want my bassoon to come in but also my horns. It wouldn't make sense to add in everybody on this last bar just before the big climax. Um, I think adding more stuff here create more expression and emphasis on the music itself. So you see this kind of guideline of five steps? Well, you can play with it to adjust to what the music asks of you, the expressive needs of the music. So let's start with the bassoon. I'm gonna just double the bass line all the way to the, not to the end. Uh, since I want to do a diminuendo here, I just, uh, I mean, on the low D, the bassoon cannot play so soft. Um, it's gonna be noticeable and this is this is quite long and low for a bassoon and I want it to end softly so I'm gonna end it here. Let's do this. Yeah, really, I don't think we need it for more than that. Now for the horns, I think we're gonna do a mix between some of the notes in here and the middle line here, maybe like the G around here. Um, and we're just gonna follow that, uh, I think, until the end. If there's something that can blend in a little bit more within the string orchestra, it's the horns. Now the ending here uh, is kind of a warm sound and uh, the horns can really uh, give this mellow kind of uh, texture. So let's try something out. Uh, I'm gonna try and follow this on my under monitor.
hear that, I like they can really bring some warmth to the sound. I just love horns paired with uh, the strings. So although they, their volume is much bigger than the bassoon and the oboe, their timbre is darker. So in some sections, uh, you could invert the, the reeds and the horns, uh, the step two or three. And now the next in line, we go back to the strings because we want to add in the double bass. What is gonna do the double bass? I want to have the double bass an octave lower here. Um, really the, the low B, the low C sharp, but not the low F sharp down here. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit too low for this. So really for the, the big climax, I'm gonna add in an octave lower. But uh, but after that, we're coming back to uh, to the original uh, cello part here. They're gonna be actually playing at the same level. It's okay to have it play at the same level. Uh, it just reinforce and give some more definition to the note. But for the climax here, I want a bit a little bit more power and maybe less definition. So adding the double bass down an octave makes sense. Now I don't want too much of a surprise here of the double bass, uh, so I will add in as well here on this last note. And it's gonna go up until the end after that. Let's do this. So we get ourselves a nice double bass. And now since we're in this lower register, I'm gonna add in the tuba. The tuba is just gonna be there for this note, this note, and this note. And uh, of course, gonna double uh, as well in the lower register with the double bass. The tuba is really much like the double bass of the winds. So just the three notes, uh, because it sounds huge. The tuba makes music sound huge. So we got our tuba, and now since we're in the lowest register, let's put our trombone there as well. I think three notes, as same as our tuba, makes sense for the trombones here. For the notes for our trombones, uh, we're gonna give um, half notes like this. Um, I think those two notes, uh, and then those two notes, and then maybe the low F and the high F here, just for these three chords. Finally, our trumpets. Now our trumpets is gonna double the melody from here. Uh, you should anticipate this kind of climax. They're really, this notes really belongs to this group of notes. So ta ti ta 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 ti. And I think the last two notes can be played by the trumpet as well. The trumpet can play softer. And since the, the timber is already there, well, it'll, it can contribute to the diminuendo since there's so many people leaving. And I think since it's a melody, uh, we, will in, we, we can allow ourselves to double it until the end. Let's record this last one. We got it, and uh, now let's listen to the whole thing.
So there you go, now you know how to make an orchestral crescendo. And again, this five-step crescendo is just a basic ground rule, and it's all related to how loud every instrument sound and how noticeable they all sound, but really depending also on the register of the instruments, like the horns in the higher register, you're gonna hear them a lot more than if they play in the lower register, as in this example. So this is also something you can consider while doing an orchestral crescendo. Now all of this can be implemented as well in orchestral diminuendo. When going back to something smaller, you can take off the instruments in that reverse order. And of course, knowing this and applying this to a whole piece can help you shape even more the dynamics of your music. And I really encourage you to go hear music from the masters. And I would say the master of orchestral crescendos and diminuendos is really Gustav Mahler. Go listen to his sixth symphony. The first movement is really a masterpiece regarding this. And most of the things I teach here and most of the things I know from orchestration, I learned it from Mahler. So thank you for listening and I'll see you in the next one.